All right, let's get this party started. Hello, I'm going to use an A-harp today and talk a little bit. Yes, about Kim Wilson and about Groove, but about ear training and a couple other ideas that I want to share with you today. So on that note, uh, let me just start by just getting some, some music going here. This is a cool track from MCCD Sessions. And if you are not following him, I'll put a link. I'll update this video later, but subscribe to his channel. He's got some great backing tracks. Uh, here's one called Blues Harp Shuffle and E. great track for working on groove so why did I call this video uh, Kim Wilson's a groove machine because he is you know if there's, one, if there's one big big lesson that I've taken away from Kim Wilson watching him live over the years performing uh, or through videos that I've watched it's that the man is always coming from that perspective of groove and as somebody who watched him closely because he's one of my all-time favorite players I picked up quickly that if I wasn't latched onto that groove, that when I went to improvise, it wouldn't come out from that well of that groove and that deep sense of feel that you get when you're locked into the groove. So maybe I'll share a little bit today about what I do. There's one specific kind of shuffle rhythm that goes along with this that helps you stay locked into it. Now this Friday, I'm doing a class. I'll put a link to that class in the video description, it's all about ear training, and I'm excited because we're going to talk about things like ear training from various perspectives, you know, not just the obvious like ear training a riff, but listening to note pitch uh, intervals, listening to notes in sequence and start understanding the relationships that notes have. The distance between two notes is, called, is referred to as an interval, and the more you lock into paying attention to what two notes sound like, in various intervals, the quicker you can begin to relate to them musically, emotionally, so they have value, so that you might select that choice while you're improvising in the moment. It gets interesting fast. So that's one thing I can share with you is that um, if you want to work on getting becoming a better improviser, start focusing on that groove. Here's the little thing I was doing. Part of what I, and then what happens is you can dissect this, but let me play it for you slowly. A harmonica. And this simple little pattern will allow you to relax and just you know, this is a fast backing track. It's the tune is, uh, the tempo is up there, but um, you find something that's, that fits for you that's a little bit slower, you know? Here's what it sounds like.
then you can just bring that in position. So your goal is to take the cadence that's happening and the, the rhythm going on and bring that feel into all of your melodic playing. And that's, that's my goal. Now I'm always locked into playing from the groove, the perspective of the groove, then my timing's good and I can connect emotionally much easier, much, much easier. Good morning. I see a couple faces, some names I recognize. So we're talking about that groove and how you can just like really fall in love with finding that. Now there are examples of, of songs where I don't come from that direction and that would be like, um, here I'll show you. Something that's more of a, a, a slow blues. Um, like that one that I demoed the other day in the key of F. That's a great example, you guys, of something that you're thinking at that point more like a singer would think. Let's see if I can grab a harp without looking. Oh, I was so close. This is a fun game. Let's see, let's see if I can grab the right harp. No, that's not going to happen. Right, let's use this one. I'm using rockets today, by the way. I've got a rocket in the key of A I was just using. But when you approach a slow blues, just quickly I'll make this point that you're thinking more like a singer. I am. I'm thinking about the melody. I'm thinking about just how I would approach it if I was trying to sing to it. Um, so here's that track in F, and it's super slow. So you have to think more long notes and melody, uh, melodic phrasing. Just have a moment and let it hit you emotionally. And don't worry about the chord changes, none of that. Get that stuff out of your head. So you need these longer notes. And you need space because without the space, it's hard to really process and take in what somebody's playing, both for the, the player and for the, the listener. Okay. It's good to see you guys here. All right. So in this class, let me just give you a kind of an understanding of some of, the, some of the things we'll do and things you could be thinking about if you're going to attend this class to get yourself warmed up. Um, even if you're not attending the class, things to think about and work on in the world of ear training. It's not just the riffs. You're trying to really hear. You know, one one good thing I used to do is uh, if I was learning a harmonica piece, I would take a walk. I've said this before, but I take a walk with the song and just soak it up, you know, listen to it and just let it hit me. Right. Not trying to be too observant in one way or the other. But then the next pass, I would go and try to just zone in on one instrument at a time. Listen to the whole song from the perspective of the bass or the whole song from the perspective of the drums, etc. Then in groups, then you could take the rhythm section and try to just hear what it sounds like when you're concentrating on the drums and the bass or um, guitar and bass or you choose and so on. And then you can listen for subtleties like dynamic range. You can listen to um, the mood that's being created, the chord changes and sort of like see how the song breathes and moves with the chord changes. This is a great example, this, this little track right here. He's walking. Interesting phrasing on the bass line. And just, just let yourself focus in on those areas. And... So those are some things you can do, but you can ear train for uh, a million things. Just the point is, is that you don't want to just do one zone. In fact, it's important to ear train other instruments because otherwise you just sound like, you know, harp players and their ideas. Unless you are, are working with guys that have studied all these other players, but why not study the guys they studied? Some of that, like the horn players, etc. All right. 
So the, in this class, I'm going to focus on three different areas. We're going to take that perspective of, like I started saying, the interval stuff. But then we're going to take technique and be able to really feel that technique on a different level. So it's about interpreting tech, the sound of a technique to where it's so recognizable that you instantaneously know that is a whatever, a split or an octave, or this is a vibrato. But then what happens is over time, your ear gets curious and says, well, which vibrato? What hole is he on? Okay, now we're getting somewhere. And you have to do this without worrying about what key the harmonica is. So you listen to the, the vibrato and you say, okay, I, I got it. It's I can tell because of these things that we have focused on that that's a three hole. And then your next goal is like, all right, well, how deep is the vibrato and so on. These are the types of things I want to get into in this class and help you decode it. I'm going to share with you an easy way to determine the key of a song. Um, I mean, we want to talk about things like, you know, what do you do when you're working with a melody? And what's the, in other words, if you're trying to learn a new melody by ear, the whole thing is but by ear training and you're lost, what is the process? What do you do to ensure that you're decoding it correctly? And that's a big part of it. So muscle memory is another part of the discussion. And I think that this is a great discussion. I brought this into an email that I just put out that muscle memory is this cool thing because it's not really muscles we're training. It's it's the nervous system, the reorganization of the nerves that creates new muscle memory. And wouldn't it make sense that your ear training is step one of creating proper muscle memory, having something to aim for? It would because you're not arbitrarily creating new muscle memory and hoping that it's right. You know, you've ear trained what it should sound like. So you have something to, to shoot for. That's everything. So that's what's going on. Hello, friends. Let's see if I got any chat here. How was that blues festival out in Portland? Yeah, the drums are a great one. Somebody says, you train those drums for sure. Because drums, that's where all the rhythmic, you know, sweet spot. There's so many different nuances happening. There can be with the drums that you want to not only learn some of that, you want it to influence you so that as you hear those things and you say, oh, I hear that detail, it's changing the way that you're playing. This track is an F, B flat harp, the piano. Love the changes. Little jazzier changes going on. So I and, and to me, and I've I've said this a bunch over the years that the art of improvisation for me is 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 being so in the moment that you can just react and you can you can be yourself in the moment and react What's this guy doing? And react to what's happening around you. And some of that means being able to hear enough detail to have a response to it. Otherwise, I feel I feel like what's happening for the average player is they get up to play and they are just trying to play what they think they should be playing. They're not really listening so intently on stage to let that come out in their own instrument. You get what I'm saying, guys. <laughs> Oh, I'll put the backing tracks that I'm using today in the video description when I finish for the person that's asking me. Um, and I'll put that link to the ear training class happening Friday at 5.30 p.m. Central. If you're on the West Coast, that's 3.30. Perfect happy hour. Segue from your evening, your afternoon to your evening, your weekend. Join me in this class. I'm going to share a bunch of tips and we're going to have fun doing it. It won't just be this... Uh, uh, let's go through the motions thing. We're going to talk about it. And I'm going to push you guys to really sort of test your ears and consider the class sort of the first steps of understanding, well, where am I at today? What were the things that were really challenging in this class where I just, I didn't hear it. And then you you start to reorganize your your practice sessions based on, well, I need more time. 
um, hearing this particular technique and hearing these intervals because, you know, that is the secret. Brain off and just try to emotionally connect, but you can't do it without all, unless you have the muscle memory and it all comes from the ear training. So what else? Anything else exciting going on in the world before I, I take off and uh, do a little bit of work today? I hope you guys are doing something fun. Something that fills you up inside. Maybe I can leave you with a little bit of this improvisation. Think about what we were talking about earlier, the note relationship. So much space. You gotta respect that kind of just. Yeah, it feels good to. And a slow blues to just allow it to hit you, you know, for a minute before you go doing anything. Where am I playing next? Um, <laughs> I got a couple options floating around at the end of this month. Um, but I can't... See. How about this? I'll update my community page with any upcoming dates. So that way you know where to look. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll update the community page. Just go to my profile page on YouTube and look for the community tab and I'll put that up there but the, I may not put it up there for another week or so when I have a better clue as to when when those are coming but yeah that's that's what's on my mind today I hope to see some of you on Friday and start working on groove you can ear train just groove um, but ear train and work on really developing an ear that can hear more, more than what you hear today that's the key just to evolve. So I hope to see Semi on Friday. You'll make it a great day.